Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Today we're going to service the clutch on this old Harley. Now Harley used basically the same clutch from 1936 right up into the 80s. There's a few subtle differences, but it's pretty much the same. So by service it, what I mean is we're going to take it apart, clean it, and put it back together. This one isn't very dirty, but we're going to clean it anyway. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is remove the primary cover. I've gotten everything out of the way. I've taken the clutch rod out of the way. This would be the one that pulls on this lever here. That's the clutch lever. This is the clutch rod. I've removed the rod to make this a little easier. And I've only got one screw left in this primary cover. There's ten screws that hold it on. And there's one left. And it's out. And the cover is off. We'll put the cover over there out of the way. Here's the clutch. So let's start. The first thing we want to do is take a measurement here. Now, this collar here is referred to as the pressure plate. This plate here is referred to as the releasing disc. Now, if I do the adjustment on this little scale here, I can see where the adjustment is now. It was already working well. So let's just use that as a reference for later. Next thing I want to do is this is the lock nut for the adjusting screw. So I'm going to remove the lock nut. And you can use a couple of big washers for what I'm going to do here. But what I generally use, here's a couple of washers just to demonstrate. But what I normally use, this is a uh, valve spring collar off of a shovel head and it fits. So if I back out the adjusting screw and put this valve spring retainer on here, put the lock nut back on, tighten it up with the 9 16 wrench, it compresses these valve springs, these, I'm sorry, clutch springs. Now that I've compressed those, I can take these adjusting nuts off. Now these nuts actually adjust the spring tension. There's ten springs here. And if I were to remove this collar without putting this valve spring retainer on here, all those springs would go boing and go everywhere. So by doing this, I'd keep it together as one assembly. So I'm going to remove these three adjusting nuts and I'd like to show this adjusting nut here. They're all three the same. They have a groove that goes all the way across the nut. So an adjustment can be made with this little bump, this detent on the uh, pressure plate. So we can adjust the spring tension. Now we have three of these adjusters so that we can get the whole thing adjusted evenly. Now with all three of these nuts removed, we can pull the entire releasing disc, pressure plate, and all ten springs with the adjusting screw in one assembly. Now this one's pretty clean, but let's just take some alcohol. And a rag and wipe it off. Normally when you open one of these they're pretty dirty. They get dirty, they get gummy, and cleaning them up makes all the difference in the world and how the clutch operates. So I'm going to set this disc assembly over here and as I pull the clutch plates out 
I can stack them on top of it and that'll keep them in order. Now first, this is an early model, so we have the first fiber plate here has no lining on the back side. The later ones did, the early ones don't. This is normally referred to as a half plate. I'm going to stack it right there. The next plate is a steel. Sometimes it's easier to get them out with a pick. And there it is. Steel on both sides. And there's a cushion here. There's three of them on each steel plate. Some of the replacement plates don't use these cushions, but what they do is they keep the clutch from rattling. It's a little anti-rattle device. It keeps the clutch from rattling when you disengage it. We'll stack it there. Again, by stacking them in order, it'll go right back in, in order. And these all alternate. You have a fiber disc, a steel, and a fiber disc. And we're going to pull them all out of here. We can pull them out sometimes two or three at a time. And now they're all out. You know, being, a, being an early model, this has four plates. Some of the later ones have five. When I say four plates, I'm referring to the fiber plates. Now, cleaning this thing, again, this one's already pretty clean, but I can wipe it out. I like to use alcohol because it doesn't make anyone sick. You can actually use brake clean. They have brake cleans now that don't make people sick. And I'm much in favor of that. <clears throat> now to dry it, Clean these. Again, they're in order. Alcohol. Wipe it all nice and clean and dry. And if it were gummy or in bad shape, we could sand it. When I was a kid, we used to do them on the sidewalk. Just slide them around on the concrete. All right, this one is nice and clean. Again, a little quicker than you would normally do it. And it slides back on over those tin studs, or what they're usually referred to as fingers. Now, these fingers, once they get grooved too badly from the plates, you can remove the entire clutch hub and sand them. Now this plate, this is a very worn plate, but it works very well. And I'm going to just degum it a little bit with alcohol here. And put it back in. And when you put it back in, these are, mount, these are actually marked out. If you can see that lettering right there, it says out which means that the plate goes in in this direction, this side of the plate faces out. Now as I slide it in, those little cushions register on these lugs inside the clutch basket. Now we're going to put in another fiber plate here, which I might add is pretty clean. Don't be surprised if you find them real dirty, but they can be clean, they can be sanded. You don't want the fiber to wear so far that it's down to the rivets, just like brake lining. There it is, I'm going to blow it off. And as you replace it, you want to be sure that the slide freely on the fingers. 
I can see that when this clutch is released, these plates will slide freely. Now in putting the steels back in, again with these little cushions, and we want to be sure that we've got the word out going out. And what that does is it orients, orientates, orients these cushions in the right direction. Not only does it do that, but you have to remember that there's cushions in three positions here. So you want to be sure and stagger them so you don't have two of these cushions lined up together or they can hit each other because they're thicker than the steel plate. There it is. That one's in there. Only got a few left. It's what we call a multiple plate clutch. And this is a dry clutch. It doesn't operate in oil. It operates dry. It likes to be dry and it likes to be clean. Let me blow it off, make sure that alcohol dries. And that it floats freely on the fingers. There it is. Nice and neat. So we'll get this steel. This is the last steel plate. Wipe it down. Again, it's nice and smooth. It's worn, but it's old and it works well. So we'll put it back in there, being very careful to always offset these little pads. My flashlight in there, and I can see the pad, and I offset it. Okay, we have only one fiber left. On these old bikes that use the last fiber in there, it has it only on one side of the plate. The other side is steel. Always want to remember to leave the steel side out. Because it doesn't rotate against this, they lock in the same position and therefore it's not a problem. So now we can put the releasing disc back on. Now there's three adjusting studs and there's three fingers there and two fingers there, two fingers there. This only goes on in one position. So there's three springs, two springs, two springs, and it goes on just like that. There it is, it's back in place. Now we can put the adjusting nuts back on. Now these adjusting nuts again adjust the spring tension. If you find a clutch slips, you can tighten them up a little bit, but you always want to be sure and tighten them evenly. Now that the adjusting nuts are back in place, they'll hold the whole assembly together. So we can take the lock nut back off the main adjusting screw. Remove our valve spring collar and set those springs. Now I'm going to put them back where they were because it was working pretty well. Using this edge on the inside edge of the pressure plate here. There it is. There it is. And there it is. There's all three of them nice and even. Be 
sure it's nice and even. Again, if the clutch slips, I can tighten these, but they always have to be even all the way around. Now I'm going to turn the adjusting screw in, which moves the clutch rod, which goes all the way across the transmission to the other side, where the throwout bearing engages on it. But there it is, and if I get it to bottom, and we can see the clutch arm here is locking up, we can back it up, oh, about, say, half a turn, maybe even a little less. It's a matter of personal preference there. And we'll put the lock nut back on. If I don't put it on all the way, I can still turn the adjusting screw with the screwdriver. So there it is. Bottomed. Back it up about a quarter to half a turn. Tighten the lock nut. And it's on. And that's a pretty close adjustment. There it is, ready to go. All clean and neat. I did that in some pretty short time when in reality you may have to really scrub them or even sand those plates. But there it is. The clutch is reassembled and ready to go. And on our next video we're going to show how to adjust a mouse trap, which Harley Davidson calls a clutch booster assembly. This is referred to as a mouse trap by most bikers. There it is. We'll adjust that on our next video. So, thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see you out on the road soon.